Welcome back to the channel, guys. Today we've got, once again, Eric Lau from Shining 3D. Thanks so much for coming in, Eric. Thanks Good to see you again. Uh, always a pleasure. This is actually one of the guys that is an expert when it comes to the reverse engineering, the CAD, and all of the scanners from Shining 3D that we sell at visionminer.com slash scanners. And we do sell this stuff. It helps us make these videos and uh, provide cool content for you guys. So make sure you go check that out if you're interested. And uh, we're just gonna dive into more of your questions from the comments down below. And if it spurs more questions, leave them in the comments down below. And we'll make sure to answer them in the next video. Yep, and uh, we get a lot of calls, we get a lot of emails. Definitely hit us up if you got more or want a consultation. But Cole, feed us the first question. Accuracy and resolution, two numbers we see. What are the differences? Accuracy, what does that mean? accuracy versus resolution. What does that mean? I'll give my basic understanding. Accuracy, is that a point is where a point is. If I'm scanning something, it's getting this point right here, and that point is within that accuracy of where it really was. Uh, whereas resolution is gonna be the number of points and how far spaced apart they are. So if I've got accuracy of 0.02 millimeters and point spacing of one millimeter, then it's gonna be accurate down to 0.02 millimeters and each point will be one millimeter apart. Eric, how would you say that? That's a really good explanation. And the thing that I want to also bring to the table um, is describing the, the scan frame that the scanners have and which ones have the best accuracy. And that would be these two, the Einscan HX and the H. Uh, the, because the, the scan frame of these scanners are larger than the, the Pro 2. The field right? of view, the right? Field of view, so like exactly. how big of an area you're scanning at a given time? Exactly. Okay. So, because the field of view is larger um, and we're able to take in more data over a wider or longer surface, the volumetric accuracy of these scanners are better than the Pro Series um, or the desktop models because we are focusing on a smaller field of view with these scanners overall. But that said, the scan frame, the field of view, if it's smaller, gives us a higher resolution on the scanners, um, on the objects. So that means that we will be getting um, more detailed surface uh, surface features with the Pro Series and with the fixed scan mode if when compared to the HX or H. Now, how does that compare to the laser mode where you get 0 0.05 millimeter point space right. on the HX? So that's a great point. Um, I do want to we do want to mention that the Einstein HX is able to capture a lower point distance because of the laser scan mode. The Einscan HX laser scan mode can go down to 0 0.05 millimeter point distance. So that is going to be better than the fixed scan mode on the Pro Series, which can go down to 0.2 uh, millimeter point distance. So if you are scanning larger parts, um, or if you do need more surface detail, then you, it would be better to purchase the Einscan HX because it does have that capability right. to go down to so, 0.05. So if you want super low, uh, high resolution detail, the HX will get you a better thing. It'll take a little longer to gather all those points, I've noticed, uh, but it will get you a little bit higher detail and resolution. Um, now compare that to the Transcan C here. This will actually get down to 0.02 millimeters, I believe, which is even less than the 0.05 from the HX, so that's another option if your objects are small enough to fit on a turntable or if you want to do the fixed scan mode. All right, so the next question we're going to cover is dynamic lighting environments. Do I need a dark room? Can I scan in direct sunlight? Can I scan in a carport? Uh, the answer is yes, uh, but no, you don't need a dark room. Yes, you can scan in direct sunlight, but Eric, can you go more into like, what's the most ideal lighting environment for these different scanners and what should I avoid? What do you need? It's always better to scan in low light environments when we're not considering texture or color um, because that is the best way that our scanners are able to collect the scan data directly from the projector, the projector and the projected pattern onto the model. If there is direct sunlight or any other lighting that is affecting the object, then the projector's pattern might not be recognized by the camera. So it's always better to scan in a low light environment and let the scanner's LED uh, help the cameras take in the projection pattern. Right, so basically it's like you're projecting, it's like you're projecting a movie on something, right? And if it, you're out in direct sunlight, it's gonna be harder to see that. It still works, you can still see the patterns in the movie, but 
it's gonna be better if you're in a dark movie theater, right? Exactly. Basically. Okay, cool. Okay, so uh, another question in regards to lighting. We've got infrared on the H and blue lasers and LEDs on the HX. How does that affect the lighting environment? It would be the same thing. So a low light environment and letting the objects be scanned with the LED lights on the scanner is the best type, is the best scenario that you'll have for collecting data. Okay, so no matter what. Now you can use the laser, like the lasers and brightness of this and even the Pro HD, they're so bright that you can do it outside in direct sunlight much of the time, right? It'll still work, just not as, as well. Exactly, there's up to a certain point of, I would say direct sunlight that can, you can use the scanners in. I wouldn't do it in a really sunny day, but I do it more on like a cloudy day. And as that's overall, we are going to be using cameras, and if the surface is overexposed, then we won't be able to scan any data. So it's always best to yeah. see which areas of your object is over overexposed, and that's something that you can do in the scan software, in the camera view. Right. Um, you actually see it just, turns red when it's overexposed. Exactly. You, want it, you adjust the brightness the whole time to exactly. get it to the right exposure. And so in those settings, in a really bright setting, you will see that it is overexposed. So you'll want to limit any potential sources so, of lights. So you really want to go possible. for the carport if you can, instead of going direct sunlight and do it on a cloudy day or at night. Um, either way, it'll just give you easier and better results. I think the tracking goes faster. Everything goes a little faster, the darker the environment. All right, so another question we get a lot is high versus low res. Now what I've found is when scanning in high res, it just tends to take longer to process all those points since so you can be sitting there waiting for it to generate the mesh a little bit longer, things like that. Whereas if you scan in low res, it's like instant, you know, one millimeter point distance versus point two, you're gonna add like, you know, what, uh, I mean, it's just gonna exponentially add time depending on how many points you have. Um, and I also find for most applications, people don't actually need more than one millimeter because they're reverse engineering it in CAD. You don't need that many points. You know where the curve's gonna be. Um, and you're not making a replica, you're going to redo it in CAD. Uh, any other little things regarding scanning high? Oh, by the way, we've also got videos coming where we are gonna scan at full resolution and provide those files so you can check it out at home. Uh, but anything on scanning low res versus high res in your experience? So in this case, we have to consider what kind of CAD program or what kind of software we're gonna be using the scan data in because a lot of these CAD programs or these sub the softwares, they don't work very well with files that have a lot of points or really large mesh files. So we want, in the case where we're doing, we're reverse engineering a part, we do want to stay, I would say between 100K points and 5 million points to represent the model. Um, and that's and for SolidWorks you, or Fusion or whatever. Basically they start crashing when you have too many exactly. points, right? Too big of a mesh the most CAD programs can't actually handle it. And that's actually part of the reason we sell Geomagic Essentials, part of the Red Bundle or separately if you need it, because that works with giant meshes and you can make that into a workable file for the CAD programs, but continue where you were. Exactly. So with if we do need higher resolution scans, then we will need a scan native software to process that information. And so Geomagic Essentials is a perfect software for that. Um, to heal the, the scan data um, and to extract features from the parts, no matter how big this, the, the point cloud data or the mesh file is. And you also find that if you're a 3D modeler and you're, comp you're using um, programs like Maya or ZBrush that are specifically designed for mesh files, then in those cases, you can take, you can scan in much lower point distance slash higher resolution and then work on the file from there. And you'll find that most of these people will want to do that um, yeah, because so, that has the most surface detail for the model. So if you're working in uh, Maya or ZBrush, you can scan as high res you want and pretty much import that file. But if you're doing mechanical stuff in Fusion 360, SolidWorks, uh, Solid Edge, um, any of those other mainstream CAD programs, you'll want to use the lower point distance on the meshes just so your program can handle it. Or use something in between like Geomagic Essentials. 
Um, and you don't always need to scan in high resolution for most applications, honestly. All right, so the next question we've been getting is a lot of our customers want to scan large objects. And they're just curious about the workflow, whether it's scanning a whole car or scanning a sculpture or something like that. Uh, what kind of tips and tricks in regards to lighting or background or, or whatnot can you, uh, can you offer for us? Well, I'd say that the best advice that I can give people who are scanning, say, the entire car frame or just wider surfaces in general is to utilize the global marker file that we have in the software. And what that does is that it's, we provide these markers for you to stick onto your parts and to use that as a sort of alignment method for the scan data to align to as we move across a really large object. And the global marker file is this marker skeleton that we create um, beforehand, before scanning any point data, to get the overall volumetric size of the size object, of the size and shape. The, so you're gonna put markers all over the object and then scan just the markers. Exactly. And then, and then turn that into its own file mm -hmm. for the point data to, to then be based off. Another way that we can use the global marker file is in a case like this, where you see on this turntable, there are a bunch of these markers that are embedded onto the turntable. And this really helps align the data as we, when we put the object onto a turntable and makes it a lot easier for you to ex, uh, create the 3D model. To align all the different parts. To align all the different so, parts. For example, we have a video scanning this Porsche valve cover and it's got markers all over it. Now, what made this a lot easier was that we scanned both halves separately but then it knew where the markers on the sides were. And so the two scans, it knew the exact distances and everything of that, and it just aligned it into a complete model really easily and quickly. So similar on the turntable where you've got all these markers, um, it just helps the software know where everything's at and it just helps everything go easier. So uh, when it comes to lighting conditions or stuff, uh, we've had some people ask about um, green screens or different colored backgrounds. Does that sort of thing help? What, what do you know about using I don't know, green screens. Right, and scanning. that's a really good question. Um, it's a really interesting point about 3D scanners in general. As you can see, we have different scanners that uses different light sources. So for example, the Einscan H uses infrared lights. The Einscan HX can use blue LEDs and blue lasers. And then for the Pro Series, it uses white LEDs. So when we think about these different light sources, we can kind of create a green screen from this knowledge. Um, so specifically, when we're using the Einscan HX here, and if it's using blue LED lasers, uh, when we're scanning object on the table, we will be capturing the table if it's a light colored object to a dark colored um, surface. But if we use something say like black acrylic or something that can actually absorb the blue LED lights and not reflect any of it, then we have essentially a green screen um, that doesn't give us back any data in the software. So black acrylic plates um, that we put markers on, and that would be a really good way to, a really good oh, yeah. plate to put your object on. We, and we, have its, <laughs> Sorry, have to have interject, it. I actually found a Lazy Susan out by the dumpster and spray painted it black and then put markers on it and it worked great. It's just a it's a lazy Susan, you know, it moves around. Now we will have these available on visionminer.com, a little more professional grade uh, for you to buy. So visionminer.com slash scanners, you can see all the accessories there. Um, but yeah, it, it just just using markers on any surface can help. And you can, can you save that as a global markers file? Yes. Ah, dude, that's awesome. Oh yeah, here's the lazy Susan. And we've got both markers on there. As you can see, different sizes for the Pro Series and the HX. So if you happen to have both, you can do that. Um, and something like this with the black color is really helpful for the Pro Series, which uses white LEDs. And you can imagine that if we're scanning in um, a low brightness setting, that is made for scanning really light colored objects. And in those cases, a black colored surface will appear as a green screen, will work as a green screen for those objects. The background won't be scanned, but the markers will be scanned and the house will be alignments and you won't have any data to clean right. up. And then with the HX, you can actually use a cutting plane so that you can scan it and then not scan anything on the surface below it. So there's exactly. workflows for that. Yeah, the cutting plane is a tool yeah. that we have on all the scanners and that will help you kind of determine the backgrounds and cut every 
data that is scanned there. So, man, a lot of information there. Guys, definitely leave your comments down below. What haven't we covered? What do you want to know that we haven't gone over? Now, there's still some more about the post-processing. Once you get your scan, what do you do with that data? And if you want to go into your CAD program, we talked a little bit about Geomagic Essentials, and we're actually about to film a bunch more tutorials and videos on how to use Geomagic Essentials and what that workflow really looks like, what it's really good for. Um, in 15 seconds or less, how would you say Geomagic should be used? Where does that really come in as important? Geomagic Essentials is a very important software for those who are serious about 3D scanning and for professional engineers. The, th the scanners that you see here can collect copious amounts of point data from you know, 100K points to 50 million points of data. And there's not a lot of software that can actually process that information. So that's where Geomagic Essentials comes in. It's really good software that can handle any size of mesh file or point cloud data, clean it up, and extract features from it that you can bring into your CAD program and easily work with. Nice, dude, it is amazing stuff. So make sure you're subscribed if you aren't already as those videos will be dropping over the next few weeks. Uh, some really, really incredible features these things do. Um, other than that, leave your comments down below. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hit that like button if you're enjoying this content. We really love it. And give us a call or shoot us an email if you want more specific information on these. And obviously, visionminer.com slash scanners. Without further ado, thank you so much for watching. Have a positive rest of your day. And we'll see you on the next video.